Hey there, fellow Mr. Bague. Welcome back to the channel where we explore the mysteries of the cosmos. Today, we have some mind-blowing news that will blow your rocketry-loving minds. Strap in as we uncover the latest and greatest in space travel technology. The new fusion drive engine. Get ready to embark on an interplanetary journey like never before. Animation of a futuristic spaceship soaring through space. Energy is the source of life, whether in space or on another planet in a distant universe from Earth. Therefore, the use of nuclear energy and continuous supply of electricity has the potential to accelerate advancements and reduce the cost of interplanetary travel. That's why nuclear rocket technology is currently a goal of many space exploration companies and it could be the solution for the future of space travel. In addition to NASA's prominent research on nuclear energy, there is a UK-based company called Pulsar Fusion that has embarked on constructing what it claims to be the largest practical nuclear fusion rocket engine ever built. Their plan is to test fire it in 2027. But will this nuclear rocket overshadow SpaceX's Starship in the future? Find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Space propulsion company Pulsar Fusion has started construction on a large 8-meter nuclear fusion chamber in England called the New Direct Fusion Drive as it races to become the first firm to fire a nuclear fusion-powered propulsion system in space. This system is set to provide a speed of 805,000 km per hour for the rocket, four times faster than the speed of the nuclear engine that NASA is currently researching. It has a single combustion chamber containing hundreds of beams of plasma with temperatures reaching several hundred million degrees Celsius, equivalent to the heat of the sun. This nuclear fusion propulsion tech, arguably a golden goose of the space industry, could reduce the travel time to Mars by half and cut the travel time to Titan, Saturn's moon, to two years instead of ten. Another upside to this technology, even if it hasn't yet been demonstrated in any system, is that the underlying physics is well understood. Fusion works similarly to our Sun by confining an ultra-hot plasma inside an electromagnetic field to create exhaust speeds fast enough for interstellar travel. This is significantly more advanced compared to NASA's nuclear thermal engines, which are currently being researched and developed. NASA's nuclear thermal engines rely on nuclear power to heat hydrogen propellants. The nuclear reactor produces high-temperature gases, which are expelled through a nozzle to generate thrust. While nuclear thermal engines offer higher specific impulse, or efficiency, compared to conventional chemical rockets, they provide relatively lower speeds compared to fusion-based propulsion systems. So how exactly does the fusion engine system work? At the heart of Pulsar Fusion's direct fusion drive lies a meticulously designed system that harnesses the immense power of fusion in a groundbreaking manner. The process begins with plasma creation, where fission power is employed to generate high-energy plasma within specialized vacuum chambers. This plasma, composed of ionized particles, serves as the fuel source for the engine. Unlike traditional fusion approaches, the fusion engine doesn't rely on achieving a sustained fusion reaction for power generation. Instead, it utilizes fission power to initiate the creation of this high-energy plasma. Once the plasma is formed, it needs to be effectively controlled and contained. This is achieved through the precise utilization of electromagnetic field coils, these coils generate electromagnetic forces that confine and manipulate the plasma, preventing its dispersion and maintaining its integrity within the system. The ability to control the plasma is crucial for ensuring safe and efficient propulsion. The ionized plasma acts as a self-sustaining fuel source for the fusion engine. It possesses both high velocity and ionization, making it ideal for generating thrust. As the plasma is accelerated and expelled through the nozzle of the rocket, it propels the spacecraft forward. Simultaneously, the plasma's tremendous heat is captured and converted into electrical power, providing energy to the rest of the ship's systems. This dual functionality of the plasma, as both a propellant and a power source, are a key aspect of the fusion engine's innovative design. Compared to conventional ion engines, the fusion engine offers a significant leap in terms of efficiency and speed. Traditional ion engines provide moderate thrust due to limitations in the amount of electrical power that can be supplied. In contrast, the fusion engine's utilization of ionized plasma allows for significantly higher speeds and efficiency. While conventional ion engines achieve speeds ranging from 20 to 40 km per second, 
the fusion engine can propel spacecraft at velocities between 110 to 350 km per second. This tremendous increase in performance results in a propulsion system that is up to 25 times more efficient than its counterparts. The exceptional efficiency and speed offered by the fusion engine make it a promising solution for interplanetary travel, with its ability to cover the speed of the fusion engine. However, vast distances and short time frames, it brings us closer to a future where space exploration and colonization become more accessible and efficient. Pulsar Fusion's innovative approach represents a significant step forward in the quest to unlock the full potential of fusion propulsion. Another notable aspect of the Pulsar interplanetary spacecraft is the fuel it utilizes. It relies on an extremely valuable element that brings numerous benefits. Helium-3 Helium-3 holds immense potential as an efficient and valuable fuel for fusion reactions. Unlike traditional fusion approaches that rely on deuterium and tritium, Helium-3 fusion offers numerous advantages, including lower radioactivity, reduced waste production, and enhanced safety. Its utilization in the fusion engine's fusion-based propulsion system brings forth the promise of a cleaner and more sustainable form of energy generation. As we strive toward a sustainable and renewable energy future, fusion power has emerged as a potential solution. The Moon's potential, as a source of Helium-3, places lunar exploration at the forefront of scientific and technological endeavors. Furthermore, the fusion power revolution holds the promise of addressing global energy demands while reducing greenhouse gas emissions. The successful implementation of fusion engines and fusion-based technologies could transform the energy landscape, providing a clean and virtually limitless source of power. Helium-3 is abundantly available on the Moon, primarily deposited by solar winds over millions of years. However, the issue that arises here is the extreme rarity of helium-3 on Earth. The other hand, if we want to obtain a sufficient quantity of helium-3 to fuel a large-scale project, it'd depend on the conquest and extraction of the moon. Moreover, limitations also arise from the challenge of confining super-hot nuclear plasma using electromagnetic fields, as made evident by Dr. James Lambert, CFO of Pulsar Fusion. The plasma behaves like a weather system in terms of being incredibly hard to predict using conventional techniques. Scientists have not been able to control the turbulent plasma as it is heated to hundreds of millions of degrees and the reaction simply stops. Indeed, that is a significant problem, and continued research, development, and experimentation are necessary to advance fusion technology and make it viable. Despite their challenges, they have also made breakthroughs to bring this concept closer to reality, such as in December of last year, the head of the Department of Energy and other federal scientific leaders announced that a fusion reaction they ran at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California achieved net energy, meaning the reaction generated more energy than was put in to initiate the reaction. It's the first time humankind has achieved this landmark. Pulsar has now proceeded with the manufacturing of the initial test unit. Static tests are to begin in 2024, followed by an in-orbit demonstration of the technology in 2027. To achieve that, the Pulsar interplanetary spacecraft with its fusion engine would indeed rely on the support of SpaceX's Starship. They are the world's largest rocket company, tasked with building spacecraft to send humans to the moon. When it comes to the power and speed of the fusion engine compared to the traditional chemical rocket engines of Starship, the fusion engine is undeadly stronger. But to acquire the necessary resources on the moon and ensure absolute safety to prevent radioactive leakage on Earth, Starship's large payload capacity and massive fairing size come into play. It would require three Starships to deploy a complete Pulsar interplanetary spacecraft, one carrying the engine, one carrying the fairing, and one carrying the nuclear reactor. Once these three rockets reach orbit, the assembly process begins for the entire spacecraft. That is what can be envisioned for the future path of the Pulsar spacecraft as it is still in the research and development phase. It's evident that it will require the support of Starship, the most renowned spacecraft currently along its journey. Well folks, that wraps up our show for today. We hope you enjoyed learning more about the amazing progress in the development of this groundbreaking technology. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. 
As always this is Mr. Vague and until next time, keep looking up.